Now, let's talk about Skinner for a moment to try to see if we can put uh, this sort of a framework or your local psychology, not local therapy, into a little perspective here. Now, what has bothered a lot of people is that he's taking a number of principles of shaping responses of human beings that really are very much the same as the principles that might be used to shape the behavior of animals, even pigeons. But as long or as soon as you conceive of it as something, as a basis with a superstructure, a basis on which to build the proper building called humanity of humans, then you need not be so critical, because as I put it at the beginning of our dialogue, you remember I said man doesn't cease to be an animal, but he's at the same time infinitely more than an animal. In the, in the, and I invoke the image, the analogy, the simile of an airplane. An airplane doesn't cease to be an airplane, although on the ground he may move like an automobile. The same holds for the human being. A human being has learning processes, conditioning processes. A human being can, if fallen mentally ill, be reconditioned in a healthy direction and so forth. And in this sense, uh, Skinner and all the other behaviorists are absolutely right. But they must not stop. Or after they have delivered their message, after they have published their books, we, you and I, need not stop and say that the whole story. But we have to re uh, recognize that in order really and uh, uh, totally to understand the human being, we cannot be spared entering the human dimension, the next dimension, uh, to start into this very three-dimensional cube, as it were. And this becomes particularly important if we are confronted with questions such as, is there a freedom? Is there a dignity? Skinner did not move beyond freedom and dignity, but he stopped before freedom and dignity because he programmatically restricted his view and his research by which he arrived at his view to the lower plane, which is of course shared with other animals. In, so you will understand how come that I once reacted in a question and answer period to a, a student of Conrad Lorenz. Conrad Lorenz, who was uh, tracing back uh, the behavior, or better to say, all types of misbehavior of drivers to certain innate releasing mechanisms and so forth along the lines of Lorenzian teaching. And then I stood up and replied, you know of, of uh, whom you are reminding me? You remind me of a rabbi who once was approached by two people from his parish who were involved in a quarrel. The one contended that the other's cat had stolen and eaten up two pounds of butter, while the owner of the cat said, <coughs> that's not only not true, it's surely impossible. My cat doesn't care for butter. Now the, it was up to the rabbi to pose as a Solomon and to come up with a final judgment uh, in uh, terms of justice and he ordered the one, bring me the cat. They brought him the cat. Then he said, bring me scales. They brought him scales. <laughs> then he put the cat on one of the scales and asked the one parishioner, uh, how many pounds of butter uh, uh, had the cat eaten up? Two pounds, Rabbi. Then he weighed the cat. And believe it or not, it was exactly two pounds. Yeah. Whereupon the rabbi said, now I have the butter, but where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> and I told this guy, this Conrad Lawrence guy, I told him, you see, now why you remind me of the rabbi? You trace back 
as far as it's possible, all human behavior, and now I speak of behavior rather than of acting, all human behavior to the level of an animal, that is to say, to you only select those uh, properties or reactions or phenomena that are equally uh, visible, perceptible in an, any animal, any other animal. But small wonder if you then wind up and say, I have all the innate, Auslösende uh, 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 Mechanismen, what is it called, uh, innate uh, mechanisms, all the behavior types of an animal and so forth. But now where is man? The humanness of man has been shut out, has been precluded. So small wonder that he doesn't find it. Small wonder that as long as you restrict Skinner, to this basic square, he cannot even see the phenomena, phenomena such as conscience and or freedom or dignity. A, uh, he would gladly accept the hypothesis that conscience is nothing but the result of a conditioning process. Look, just consider a dog that has wet the floor and now uh, slings under, under the couch with the tail between its legs. This is bad conscience. Now, it's the result of a conditioning process. He's absolutely correct. However, true conscience only begins where the fear of punishment or over against the, the hoping and longing for reward is no longer a determinant and the reason on which you build your decision to behave morally.